All right, guys, uh, what's up? It's a three dudes review, and we are back. This time, it's going to be a little different. Actually, a lot different than the last review that we did. It's going to be good. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, you know, I, you know, hey, I'm not hating on Taylor Swift. I'm not either. The last week was just a turd sandwich. <clears throat> Come on. Don't act like it wasn't. I think that uh, Taylor Swift's album just didn't represent me, but that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. So, anyways, I'm going to have Joe here announce the album and let you guys know what we're going to do this week. Yeah, uh, well, this week's album is a little bit of a change up uh, from anything we've done, and uh, it wasn't what we originally had planned. However, I forgot something that was needed for the album we were supposed to do this week, so uh, we, we did a... A, uh, a change on the fly, if you will, and we're doing something in the Halloween kind of vein. It is Marilyn Manson's Antichrist Superstar album from 1996. Um, back when this came out, this was kind of a landmark uh, album. It was a different style, a different sound from what was a, you know, it was a harder edge grunge meets uh, metal meets uh, just a lot of stuff. I haven't heard this album in 20 years, so cannot remember if it's good or not um i don't know if these guys ever heard this album so uh let's all brace ourselves to a journey to hell all right and we're gonna get things started with the very first song on this album it's called irresponsible hate anthem Ooh, wow sounds like a, a, a good song yeah it does now that's wow. how you kick off an album wow Okay, uh, <laughs> I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. <laughs> That's uh, like a kick to the nuts. Yeah, in, in an interesting way. Like wow. Woo. Um, who wants to kick this off? Uh, um, uh, yeah. So uh, all I'm gonna say is uh, very intense. The the song was very in your face. Punch you in your face. Um, I'm just going to read just a couple lines here. I am so all American. I sell you suicide. I'm I am totalitarian. I've got abortion in my eyes. So yeah, I uh, read that and that's all I needed to read. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, Marilyn Manson. Listen, I knew he was an intense guy, um, but. Yeah, I've never really listened to like his albums like that. Um, just like some, you know, a couple of his main hits. Um, but this is this song hit me, um, and I don't. And it kept hitting me. And it kept hitting me. I just wasn't ready. So, who wants to go next on this? I'll go next. Uh, yeah, it was pretty, uh, pretty intense, man. Um, I'm not sure. I couldn't really understand what he was saying. But <laughs> something like. Ah! Yeah, it sounded like he was a. Uh, it sounded like the the cover of the album. Really, it's just a lot of shit going on. You don't really know what's going on, but uh, it's all right. It's, uh, I don't know, man. It's a very striking contrast from last week. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but um, uh, I hope it's. Uh, I hope we can understand what it says on the next song. Uh, well, the next song is the the song you've definitely heard. It, it's. It's his um, main hit. Yeah, so. cool. Biggest hit. Not his big, main, oh, the biggest hit. Biggest hit. Yeah. Um, I mean, you got to follow up with something good after that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, like I said, it's been about 20 years since I've listened to this album. Uh, I've seen Manson live twice, so I kind of have an idea of what to expect. Um, uh, yeah, the, the guy is famous for doing things like uh, burning Bibles and masturbating and trying to suck his own penis on stage and stuff like that so he, he's quite the yeah yeah he, he's an intense uh, shock rock is is the thing back then and this was this was cool back in the late early or mid to late 90s this was the the thing the envelope pushing um maybe there's a reason why i haven't listened to this album in 20 years so uh definitely more drums than the last album definitely <laughs> The bass line was pretty good, though. It's, yeah. Uh, they, I dug the bass line for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, I, will, I don't know if he's exactly the greatest uh, songwriter in the world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, we'll keep it moving, guys. This next track is called The Beautiful People. Yeah! Wow. Oh, man. All right, so that was The Beautiful People. Who wants to go first on that one? I will. All right. all right, so it's all downhill from here, huh? That's, that's <laughs> the no, best. <laughs> no, I need to be honest, man. <laughs> that's the best track. That's his uh, most popular. So we'll see, man. Now nah, it's a great track. I love the drums. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> After last week, we got some good drums in the mix. Uh, yeah, now nah, it's a dope song. I like the chants, too. The chanting that they had at the end there. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good track, man. Yeah. Um, this dude is freaking crazy, though, man. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, well, okay, so every time I hear the song, I think of three things. Monday Night Raw. Uh, what was the, the, the claymation uh, fight thing on uh, MTV? Rob Robot Chicken? No, 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 no. no, no. Um, oh celebrity Deathmatch. Oh, yes. Celebrity Deathmatch. Yes. And I think about uh, working out and, and, and playing football and stuff like that. Because this was like that, like... Just song that you got like super pumped and just wanted to punch somebody in the mouth to. Um, yeah, that was like this was that kind of track. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give this one a nine, maybe yeah. a ten. Uh, you know, the problem with this track, sort of like with Black Hole Sun, it is a lot of radio play still to this day on the X and things like that. Uh, for me, a ten has to be something that I hear. Not frequently on the radio, but when I want to hear it, I want to hear it and hear it and hear it. Uh, I will say I would play this track several times. You know, it's, it's in my it's in my rotate rotation of tracks that gets me you know fired up stuff. So uh, the drums, it's like the Energizer Bunny on crack. Um, so it's good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. I definitely. This is like. Uh, I could see why there's, there's mosh pits uh, <laughs> for this. Um, this definitely makes you want to get up, jump around, like just, just like headbang, like hardcore. Like this is definitely one of those songs. Um, every time I hear it, I'm just like, oh man, there's there's something to get your blood going, and <laughs> it's like you, you got to get up and do something. <laughs> like, primal, yeah, it's primal. <laughs> Maybe it's drums, it is. man. It's <laughs> It is. It's the drums are primal. Yeah. yeah. If you had these drums in that last album, it might actually be halfway okay. Oh. We need to make a remix to that album. I uh, think you're right. We should have I'll a start, Manson I'll, Swift crossover. I'll start it out, and then we can uh, go from there. All right. All right. <laughs> what do we got up next? All right. So the next song is called "Dried Up, Tied, and Dead to the World." Oh, that sounds happy. Yeah. Wow. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Wow, um, I mean, I'll go first. I'll go first on it. Yeah, you go first. Um, yeah, the instrumental wise, yeah, it was actually pretty good. Um, I was digging the guitars and everything. Um, lyrically, it scares me. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> last week, lyrically scared me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I, I, uh, I, I don't know, Marilyn Manson, man. He's 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 definitely like very like he gives you the edge in, in, in everything and I don't know like for instance the chorus was basically saying I'll be your lover I'll be forever which sounds fine and dandy That's sweet. but uh, then it goes in I'll be tomorrow I am anything when I'm high and so oh you know what I mean so then it's like wow uh, you know and then he goes into saying all dried up and tied up forever and then all effed up and dead to the world. So this is like, you know, where did this come from? You know, it's just, <laughs> it's just, yeah. And lyrically, I, I, uh, I'm not. Manson, though, man, he just, it's, it's, it's he, I don't think lyrical content was what he was concerned about. It was what can, can he say and do to just shock people into buying albums, like that. The, so for me, this track would have been. Uh, you guys familiar with Nine Inch Nails? I've, yeah, I've, I've heard of you. Okay, so yeah. this sounds like a song that Trent Reznor was like, yeah, I really don't want to do it. Here, Manson, have it. Um, it, it, it. I mean, it does. It sounds like a Nine Inch Nails track that Trent didn't want to do, or he produced it, and, and just was like, here you go, Manson, and Manson put his own lyrics in there. Um, one thing I am really, 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 really realizing right off the bat since I haven't heard this in forever is Manson cannot sing. Um... He is a screamer, he's a growler, 
he's a metal, like, I, the kind of metal I don't particularly care for is the growling, like, I don't like that kind of metal. Um, so, maybe there is the reason why I haven't listened to this in 20 years. Not hating on the song, I actually love the instrumentals of it. I just, yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, um, you could uh, just listen to it without the vocals. Mm -hmm. It would be a nice little instrumental, kind of like, uh, I kind of like that industrial sound it had to it. Mm -hmm. I like that little snare that they added in there. It's kind of a different sound. Um, yeah, vocals, I don't really care much for vocals, but I feel like it was very well produced. Different kind of like alternative rock sound. Like you said, the Nine Inch Nails sound. Which is a pretty good sound, but the vocals, it's like, ah. Eh. Yeah, if Trent Reznor was singing on it, I think it'd be better. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, not a bad track for the vocals. Alright. So far it's better than the Swift album. <laughs> you know, like last week we were talking about how like Taylor Swift's music was to help you relax and take a poop. This is like I'm gonna scare the shit out of you. It's a whole different style of poop coming out. It's coming out quick. It's, yeah. <laughs> this is like I got some anal leakage going on that's going into a full mass of <laughs> 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 Oh gosh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this next track is called Tourniquet. All right. So that was Tourniquet. Who wants to go first on this one? I will. All right. I like it, man. Um, it's clean. It's a lot cleaner than what we were listening to. It's. I like those clean mixes, especially those drums. The drums sound amazing. You could actually kind of hear what he was saying this time. Mm. Mike um, loves his drums. Yes. Yes, I love that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I really like the guitar too. Uh, the, guitar, the, the guitar and the drums, how they're mixed together, it sounded really good. And his vocals, I didn't think sounded as bad as the previous track. Um, yeah, that's uh, I'd put that one in the category of the beautiful people. It's more of a um, more of a clarity mix than the other two. The other two were pretty like muddied up and distorted. But yeah, I mean, it's, um, definitely, I'm I'm kind of impressed so far the way this album's been going. Um, I like that track a lot. Nice. Um, yeah, for me, I I will have to agree with Mike in the sense that you could definitely hear him more clearly in this track um, on, a, on a lot of the lyrics he was saying. Um, all in all, it definitely sounds like, because a lot of stuff he does is like, he really, it's very distorted. Like, he puts that on his vocals, and I don't really like that as much because it's really hard to, like, really actually hear what he's saying. Um, this one was definitely more clear. Um, instrumental wise, I've been noticing so far in this album, I really like these, like, I, I really love like the sound from his songs like it sounds like really like you can get into it and it's 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 got its own little like sound to it and I really like that um, and it, you know it's definitely different but I like I said lyrically though um, is I, I read the lyrics every time like a song plays and like they're 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 freaky they're they're a little freaky to me like <laughs> like I don't literally like I just don't understand where he's coming from I mean I'm not a Marilyn Manson fan but I don't have anything against him it's just like I just don't know where he's coming from with these lyrics they're they're creepy so like <laughs> um, but that's the only downside that I'm hearing so far in this album so far is just the lyrics but everything else. I'm digging, and I like this one too. Uh, I'm kind of in the same boat with you guys. I mean, instrumentally wise, the songs are they're 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 good. You know, they make you feel a certain way. They make you pumped up and ready to rock and roll and just oh. The worst part about the album is Manson himself. I mean, if we're gonna be honest here, Manson, this is why his career died in the year 2000. Mm. Is because people realized he sucked. Uh, he was a one-trick pony. And, oh, and and it's the truth. I mean, like I said, I haven't listened to this album in 20 years. You do hear the beautiful people a lot on radio. So it gives you this sense that, like, oh, this this was the, this, this guy's good, because that's a good song. Mm -hmm. Then you get into the crux of what he does and puts out there. and There's a reason why he had, like, maybe seven or eight hits on radio throughout his career. But the rest of his albums, you maybe not paid attention to, kind of like Limp Biscuit, you know, like <laughs> Nookie is an awesome song. <laughs> the rest of the album is garbage, but you look back at it 20 years later and you go, okay, you know, times change, taste change, ear changes. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm right now very impressed with the, the music. 
the Manson part. If it was a different lead singer, I think it would be like fire. Like yeah, if you heard Chris well. Cornell on this, or if you heard Scott I mean, Weiland, somebody that can actually sing, right? Like somebody like, who actually could sing. Very well produced. Dude. Right, right. I mean, so, Trent Reznor did miracles with Manson and made him sound like he was an artist. He probably had to do a lot uh, to get it to sound like this. Yeah, <laughs> and it still doesn't well, sound very like, good. So what, like, you, like the, what you're bringing up with the, the lyrics, like it, Manson's just like one of those artists who'd be like. Okay, I'm gonna add the word bitch. I'm gonna add the word fetus. I'm gonna add the word semen, and that's gonna just shock people. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it, it has no relevance whatsoever. It's just I'm gonna throw these words in there. You know, abortion. <gasps> you know, like, <laughs> people were just like, oh, it, it, it was to get attention. It wasn't to actually like progress the the message or song or whatever. It just mm. shocked the shock. Yeah. Yeah. Wait for our next album to come out. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. We're just gonna shock and awe. That's the album. Shock and awe. <laughs> All right, this next song is called Little Horn. Wow. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that was Little Horn. <laughs> Do you want to go first on this, Jeff? Sure. Okay. Uh, you know, if anybody out there has kids and you know, like, you get that, like, five minute window to have sex with your girlfriend or wife or whatever because the kids are like somewhat half asleep in the bedroom or something and you gotta pound it out quick that's what this song reminds me of it's like get in there go hard and then done um you know so uh yeah it was just like a, a, a two minute just rupture and then pop and go i mean the lyrics we were kind of looking at them I, we were talking maybe we're gonna put the lyrics scrolling across the bottom for each song or something because, again, to my point of where Manson just adds things to just shock you, this song is kind of a great example when the opening line is, uh, I have an apple in my pussy mouth. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> I didn't know pussies had mouths. I Now I learned something new, and apparently apples go in them. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's better than a... Uh, Zucchini in my uh, butthole. Uh, <laughs> you know. I feel like that's coming next, though. That probably a, is. Coming next. I have a gerbil in my ass. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, yeah. like, <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, once again, it was, it was, I think it was even almost more kicking your face than in the first track. I mean, it was boom. Like, I, it was two minutes and 44 seconds of just, just, I felt like my face kept getting punched, but like, then again, I went and read the lyrics, and then I started wondering, what am I doing listening to this? Like, this isn't me. Like, this isn't who I am. It's breaking your mold. <laughs> it, really, yeah. it really is. It's it's affecting me. Uh, you know. Uh, yes, the lyrics are uh, very just vulgar. Um, and I vulgar, vulgar, yeah, vulgar, vulgar, like, vulgar. just vulgar, like just like Lord vulgar. No, just like vulgar, but vulgar. Like it's just you know ratchet. It oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. that's a right. Yeah. yeah, ratchet. I just don't understand the lyrics. It's just not me. I just you know I and I and I and I really like examine them, and I just, I just can't get it. I think there's um, a lot of drugs when writing this. So I don't think he even understands the lyrics to be honest with you. Mm. I, something's messed Somebody up. Somebody couldn't come up to him and be like, hey man. Uh, Maybe you should uh, say something else. Maybe you should clarify what a pussy mouth and the apple means. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Nah. I, yeah. 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 They, one, thing, <laughs> one good thing I, I will say though is um, it was only two minutes and forty four seconds. Yeah, you yeah. like it short and sweet. Man. Yes, it, it was definitely but, short. But I mean, and sweet. would you want to listen to that for five minutes? nonstop? I mean, I would Probably. rather listen to that for five minutes than what we listened to last week. I mean, you know. At least this has emotion and feeling in it, whether it be, you know. Right. I mean, last week was just like. Oh, oh, right. I agree with you on there, but I don't, I don't like this song at all. No. It kind of hurt my ears towards at the end. They had like that feedback in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, the feedback was just the, the feedback's good, and and if it's done in good ways, if you just put it in there just to make things. Less, yeah, feedback was, yeah, it was just not very like nails pleasant. on a chalkboard. Yeah, this wasn't a very pleasant song to listen to. I don't think any of these songs are meant to be pleasant to listen to. Well, like, <laughs> I'm going to go and relax the cement. And the tourniquet one wasn't bad. No, I yeah, mean, no, no, that was a, it was a, I mean, it, as far as metal goes, that's, you know, yeah. 
Again, better than Swift so far. Dang. Oh my that album was straight up dookie last week. <laughs> I even said in my review that I wasn't feeling that one. Um, it just didn't speak to me. I said it in the review, okay? Um, you didn't have your inner lifetime on? No, no, and my inner lifetime wasn't the one. I just, you know, hey. By the way, we're all going to church after this album. Uh, we, we, we should because... Yeah. Uh, uh, and I'm Jewish. And I'm I think we're all going to hell after this album. <laughs> that might be too, oh you know. I don't want to. All right. What don't do we got worry. next? We'll hold hands. Uh, all right, the next song is called uh, Crypto Shed. Crypto shed. Yeah, shed. C H I D. Shed. 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 Yeah. He was ahead of the time. We probably knew the cryptocurrency. How much drugs was he on <coughs> while making this? Oh my gosh! All well, of them, bro. He took everything. Yeah. The, the, the he's like, months. listen, just stick it in my arm, put it up my nose, shove it up my ass, hey. pour it down my throat. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, oh, so good. that was crypto shed. Um, and crypto shit is what it's called. <laughs> Holy crap. Started off promising and then it turned into just, oh. Oh. oh my goodness. Uh, that might have been the worst song or one of the worst songs we've ever heard on this so far. Like, it's up there, bro. I mean it started off like halfway decent. The first what minute and a half? Two minutes was okay. And then whatever the fuck the second part was. It, it was like the, the Elvin and the Chipmunks took LSD and started singing on the track. That's, the, that's probably what he was going for. Oh, wow. I, I don't know about this. I don't, once again, um, I mean, yeah, the, the lyrics, horrible. But even the instrumental, horrible. I, I didn't even like anything about this song, to be honest with you. This was a no-go for me. Um, yeah, I, I didn't understand any of the lyrics. It's, I, I mean, one of the things it says... When the worm consumes the boy, it's never considered rape. What, what, what does that even mean? What does that mean? I just need to know, like, in his head, what, what do these things mean? Just help me understand. I don't think so, he knows. Uh, I really think that this is just, like I said, how did he get, like, a record deal? Well, that's the thing. Like Again, he's an attraction. How did Britney Spears get a record deal? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, at least, I mean, Britney had some bangers. Come on. She had two big ones. <laughs> Two big bangers. Oh, exactly. Oh, my gosh. I mean, uh, listen, I love to listen to Britney Spears' music on mute. I mean, it's, right. it's, so that's yeah. the same thing with Manson. I've never played a Britney Spears song when I DJed. Dang. I'm sure you played Toxic or something. Not I don't hit, think so. Not a Hit Me Baby one more no, time. I don't think so. Uh, Nobody's even asked me. Oh, man. And, well, again, the generation your guys' age, Britney is old school now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, Britney slander from me. Right, anyway, <laughs> this song is trash. Let's move on to the next one. All right. So this worm boy. <laughs> no worm boy. Hit no, his name's no, no, no. De deformography is what. Okay. The what is it called? Are. Deformography. Oh god. <laughs> deformography. Um. Wow. Uh. I mean, I'll go. I did not like the song. <laughs> I'm just gonna rate the songs like that. Listen, I didn't like it. Okay, listen, it was really off. Like the chorus, especially. Oh gosh, like it was hard to like listen. It was literally like my ears were like screaming. They were saying, "Stop, silence, just silence," um, and and I couldn't give them the silence that they wanted. You know, uh, so yeah, definitely did not like this one. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what it was about. But a lot of these songs, I don't even know what it's about. So. Um, all I know is the chorus said, rock star, you're such a dirty, dirty rock star. Uh, so, that's the it's dirty. About, it's about deformography. You don't know what that is? I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm sorry. Do you know what deformography is? I, I, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is my balls are getting deformed by yeah. sitting in his pants. They're riding up my ass, bro. Why are you wearing tight ass pants? I don't know. I, I should have worn my mesh shorts. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's do the next us. one. No, I gotta give mine. Yes. Mike, you gotta give yours. I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I agree with Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I I don't know exactly what they were going for on this song. I mean, there were times where it wasn't half bad, and there was times where it was completely bad. And the repetitiveness of the lyrics just I don't know, like. And how long was this? This was, I mean, this was a deep, four minutes. That, song. Long. that was four minutes. That was the longest four minutes in the history of music. I mean, it's too much. They were trying to do too much. Yeah, like I, I get that the, the, it's a Trent Reznor track. I mean, you can tell he produced this one, 
but it just, um, yeah. God, it, is that it, the it, worst one so far? No, 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 that last one was. Yeah, that was a shit is. sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Two bad ones in a row. Yeah. I mean, but hey, you know, I mean, like I said, there's a reason maybe I haven't listened to this stuff in 20 years. Again, when you're 18, 19 years old, you think this is the coolest shit in the world, and then. Yeah. You know, and you're a little worm boy. Yeah. <laughs> My worm wants to go back in the hole. <laughs> mm, just, oh. Well, speaking of worms, guys. <laughs> More songs about worms! <laughs> this yes. next song is called Worm Boy. Oh, jeez. All right, so uh, Worm Boy. Uh, what would you guys think? It's trash. Whoa, trash! Like, this dude can't write a decent hook. He just repeats the same two lines over and over again. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna give you that with the with the writing still is not again when you're young you think this is cool cutting edge edgy stuff and as an adult you listen to it going it's still well produced but I'm no gonna, yeah the songwriting is getting very annoying I, I'll tell you what if th this song reminds me of pop punk had balls this would be like that kind of like that that like catchy bass dun, 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 dun. like the song was catchy the the bass was the hook the the whole da 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 it it got infectious in you like I I can bob my head to this the singing sucked the songwriting sucked um, again you know it's like what, 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 what's those band like Simple Plan and oh, Newfound Glory yeah. that had that kind of sound except if it had a, a ball sound you know because like that pop punk shit had no no like no to it. it was just like <laughs> but it was catchy though exactly it was, it was meant for girls and frat guys ended up listening to it too so <laughs> you know but this, this had uh, that kind of feel to it that like catchiness except for that about 30 second part in the middle of the, <laughs> yeah that, the, was that. that you know oh, uh, my heroin kicked in <laughs> <laughs> that's what <would> happened <sighs> Yeah, um, I, 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 I thought it was well produced too, but yeah, lyrically it was very, uh, very repetitive. Um, he said the same thing so many times, like the chorus was just, oh my gosh, I was ready for it to end. I'm like, can we say some new stuff? But then again, at the same time, you don't want him to say new stuff because it's going to be creepy. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> yeah, you're torn. It's yeah. like, okay, he's not saying something still crazy. Right, right. But, uh, <laughs> Said it 35 times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're just waiting for something like, penis! Yeah. 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 I thought I something else was going to pop up. I'll be all bored at any end. Yeah. Like, yeah. Put your finger in my mouth. Yeah. Right. <laughs> my asshole while you play with my apple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I'm happy that, uh, <coughs> musically, like, you can hear what he was saying. Like, it wasn't very distorted. You can hear the lyrics pretty clear. But, he said um, three things. But he only said three. Yeah, you're right. All right. He said three things. Um, and that's how I feel about the song. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so then... <laughs> this is kind of like the Taylor Swift album. Uh, yeah, it's it's like the, the same it's thing. The other, it's different it's way. the other spectrum. Exactly. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Wow. Um, okay. Uh, so this next one is called Mr. Superstar. Ooh. Wow! Is it over? Wow, it's over! My gosh, my gosh, it's over! Okay. So, um, that one was Mr. Superstar. Um, who wants to go first on that one? That was like a audio enema. Um, <laughs> yes, it was! Uh, you know, here's the thing about this. Okay, so <laughs> I, I know why this album was considered groundbreaking for its time because it was kind of like one of the first albums to kind of hybrid the uh, grunge sound and what would become new metal. It was kind of like that. That's the word I was looking for. New metal. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of that first album that kind of teetered on both. So at the time, it was very edgy and groundbreaking. Again, listening back to it and listening to what we know now about new metal, yeah. Um, there were parts of this song that were halfway decent, and there were parts that were just god awful, mm -hmm. and it was super repetitive. Again, um, so yeah, yeah. Um, to me, I thought like the verse musically was kind of cool. Like I like the drum beat and the guitar. 
But then when the chorus kicked in, it just became such a mess. It just, like, you just hear it and you're like, you just want to cover your ears. Like, I'm sorry. Um, and then at the very end, it just became so repetitive. Like, I don't know if that was, like, a thing. Like, that, like, it, the more things you can repeat, like, the cooler it is. Like, but I don't that know. That was new metal. Like, if you, uh, yeah. if you go back and you listen to albums from Limp Biscuit and Corn and Saliva and bands that were very popular at that time, and you listen to it now, the choruses and the hooks were, you know, like, listen to Nookie. Listen yeah. to Break Stuff. His songs are not good, but at that time, they were great. Like, Break Stuff is just awful. Mm-hmm. Just one of them days, gonna break up, wake up, love it. Mm-hmm. When you were 16, 17, that was the shit. You know, yeah. 38, you're like, that's shit. <laughs> and this is what this is. This is sad to me, this album. Because I remember this album, I remember Manson being this cool, like, edgy, like, oh yeah, Manson such a deep profound artist such a risk taker and then I'm listening to it now going yeah just a drugged out sadist wannabe who wanted to shock people to get attention because he did so Jeez. took the words right out of my mouth man wow what do we got next uh, <laughs> <laughs> this next one <laughs> is called Angel with the Scabbed Wings Wow. Before you guys give your review. Can we say something nice about Let's all say one something nice about it. Wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Before you give your review, wait. Mm. All these songs are knockoffs. This is... I don't know if you can hear this, but this is Thunderkiss 65 by White Zombie, which was made in 92. It's the same freaking song. With somebody that can actually sound good. Yeah. Wow. All right, so let's say one good thing about it. Though. I like the tambourine. No. <laughs> I like the Thunder Kiss 65 ripoff. Okay. Uh... <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh... I I like the drums. There we go. I like the drums. There we go. If I'd never heard that song by a white zombie before, I would say it's a good song. A lot of the songs are like that, though. It's like you could hear another right. song. You could hear like, an influence like or something. something. Right. Um, the repetitiveness, though. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's very repetitive. I mean, this is about as the mumble rap today. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, too. Like, yeah. this is the mumble rap, rap metal rock or whatever. Rock, new metal, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. instead of hearing Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci yeah. Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, you hear Scab at the Sore, Scab at the Sore. Yeah. Yeah. It's the equivalent. <laughs> I have nothing really that great to say about this song. You know, I have to apologize to you too because I was an hour and a half late and I had to pick this album. So. It's, it's, it's all good, man. We're almost done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's still better than Taylor Swift, though. Wow. Oh, hell. Okay. It's just a different kind of bad. Yeah. Um, At least it keeps you up. You right. Know? Yeah. At least I don't feel like I'm about to fall asleep. Yeah. Right. All right. This next song coming up is called Kinder. Feld. Kennerfeld? Kinderfeld. Kinderfeld. F E L D. We'll see what it's about. You know, okay. You almost need to take like a Xanax after each one of these pills because yeah, it's like a Percocet or something. Yeah. Like, I got a headache. Yeah. So that was Kinderfeld. Um, <laughs> I'll kick it off. Yeah, it was once again another song that was very repetitive. Very repetitive. Especially at the end. It's just like, dude, how many times are you going to say this? Um, uh, yeah, it was. To me, it was very like experimental too. Like, was, there's a lot of different sounds that weren't like instrument sounds in this song. It was very, you know, very experimental to me. Um, but yeah, once again, I mean, the lyrics, I just, I just don't get it. I mean, I read it, you know, uh, just for you guys. Toys all smell like children. The scab knees will obey. I'll kneel on a broomstick just to make it go away. Like, what, what, what does that mean? Can anyone explain? I just want the audience. To explain what that means to me, like, it can, can someone comment underneath this video and let me know what that means? That, uh, I just that's that, uh, what's it called? Atheism shit. It, that's probably one of their Bible verses, bro. 
I don't know, man. There's probably something in there. I don't even know if he's a real atheist. Or a, a, a Satanist. Satanist. Whatever it is. I think... I, I, Maybe he's in the Illuminati, bro. We don't know it. <laughs> it. It's just very... It, it's very strange to me. But that's all I have. Maybe this song's weird. Maybe he's speaking in, a, in sort of a coded language. Maybe. Oh. sticks are the thing, man. You know what's messed up? Is, so, Brian Warner, the guy who Marilyn Manson, his real name, when you hear him actually talk and, like, articulate points of view and things of that nature, whether they be about censorship or, you know, political stuff, he's actually a really, really intelligent guy. Like, he doesn't sound like the train wreck you hear on these albums. So it's all, I mean, I've always said this about Manson. I don't think he put stock into the lyrics. I think he says stuff just to shock and awe. I think it's a lot like Howard Stern, where it's, mm. you know, what can I do to grab somebody's attention? I'm going to put this on a track, and it's going to make people question. You know, like, scab me, smells like children's toys, kneeling on a broomstick, means absolutely fucking nothing. But, when you dress like that, you look like that, and then the way you pronounce it or say it over a track, then all of a sudden you got the parents going, mm. <laughs> you know, but if you just took those lyrics and just put them on like a piece of paper and gave them to a normal person, they'd be like, "Are you having a stroke?" <laughs> I mean, it, I really do believe that it's just the the presentation is more what Marilyn Manson was about more than anything. It wasn't about quality of music. It, clearly, I mean, the more, yeah. <laughs> the more I'm listening to this and the longer it's been since I've actually been into that kind of stuff. It was all about the show. Mm. Yeah, this wouldn't be bad if we were, if we were live. Uh, so live, he's quite, quite pretty entertaining. Yeah, it, I hey, mean, look at this fucking clown on the stage, man. Like, <laughs> what the hell, trying to suck his own dick and shit? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, live, he is. Um, it's it's captivating. It's a it's a show. I mean, you, you know, yeah. it's sort of like Al, Alice Cooper, you know, with the beheadings and the. Mm. Fake bloods and oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a show. A disturbing show, but it's a show. Uh, yeah. It's a freak show. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Alright. All right. Next up. So, this next one is called Anti Christ Superstar. Okay, so that was uh, Anti Christ Superstar. Uh, so, who wants to go on this one? <laughs> I like the beginning. Um, yeah. The beginning was promising, and then once again, here we are once again, man. Um, it's like they know like three notes. <laughs> like honestly, I mean, like they don't, they don't, they don't. I don't know, man. They, I, I just remember this stuff being a lot better. <laughs> like seriously, I, 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 it's not a bad song. It's just. It's the same song over and over and over at this point. It, the lyrics are goofy as hell. The vocals suck. The repetitiveness is just droning to the point where you're almost like, dear God, let this music end. Your ears hurt after the tracks. Um, even, okay, so... It's a hard song as a metal song. It, 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 love that. Do something other than just. Da, na, 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 da, na, na, da. That was four and a half minutes of. Da, na, 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 da, na. Three notes. Three notes for four minutes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'll say this about it. Yeah, you're not, this is not an album. If you plan on like hearing some really cool riffs and some really cool guitar solos, this one ain't it. This album is not that kind of album. Um, I mean, to me, it's, it's kind of bare on, on a lot of stuff that I feel like some of these songs or the potential that these songs have. Uh, they don't really, to me, like, I, I could hear so much it could be better in it and it just the, the expectation just never fully lets out in these songs um but yeah i mean this song 
for the staple of the album, Antichrist Superstar. I mean, it was definitely like, you felt like you were like, you know, going to hell. You know, this is definitely some intense, but I mean, lyrically, it didn't, it, I mean, it's, obviously his lyrics are crazy, but I looked through the lyrics, he didn't say anything too crazy in this one. Um, but I mean, it just, a lot of it was still repetitive. Like every single song, I keep saying it, but it's true. Every single song is like repetitive to me, and I don't know why they chose to go down this repetitive route. Aside from like two, maybe three songs, this is very generic. Yeah. Like I hate saying that because this was my era of like the cool, you know, and mm -hmm. it, this is pretty, pretty generic and paint by numbers music. I mean. It is. I mean, if, if you're going to do Metal 101, you know, here's your power chords, and this is what you do. I mean, maybe this is what has killed rock and roll, is <laughs> this... <laughs> this <Manson. laughs> well, I mean, face it, there's a whole generation that this was the first stuff they were really listening to. Yeah, that, right. you know, we're getting into rock and metal, and this was what they heard. This wasn't... This is not... Judas Priest, this is not Iron Maiden, this is not Ozzy, Metallica, this is, you know, that there's generations raised on this and corn and, and milk biscuit and, you know, that's why music sucks now, is because maybe we didn't offer them good enough stuff to grow up on. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling bad. I hate to hear it. <laughs> I agree, man. I feel like it's, uh, I grew up listening to this, and yeah, it makes sense. Huh. Where we're at today. <laughs> I mean, seriously, rock nowadays, if you listen to what most of the rock is today, like Nickelback was the biggest band in the world for like 10 years. Yeah. And I'm sorry, Nickelback 20 years ago, 25 years ago, well, I shouldn't say 20 years ago, because they were 20 years ago. Uh, let's say Nickelback in the early 90s wouldn't even make a dent in music. They wouldn't. I mean, you had Pearl Jam and Nirvana and Soundgarden, yeah. Ozzy James. Oh, there's Nickelback. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> this next one is called 1996, which is the year this album came out. Mm. All right. Well, that was uh, 1996. Are you sure? I I, I I mean, he said Antichrist Superstar on this one 20 times, and it was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, I, I honestly, when I first started hearing him say that, I thought it was the last song, but it was not. It's 1996. Uh, so, yeah, there was a lot of anti everything, um, a, a bunch of anti stuff. Um, I, I don't understand how you could be anti of some of these things. Um, so, for instance, uh, he is anti-choice, anti-girl, anti-flag, anti-white, anti-man, and anti-future plan. Uh, so I don't, I don't. How are you? Okay. Anti everything. Yeah, he's pretty much anti everything yeah, here. Again, uh, it's more of that. Like, oh, how come they shop? <laughs> um. So yeah, and. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, one thing, yeah, he did have a shock one on this. As I was reading the lyrics, he says he's anti-gay and anti-dope. And he is, I am the, I'm going to say F word, anti-pope, okay? So, I, I don't know, I mean, I, yeah, I, I guess back in the day, if you heard that, like, whoa, like, that's, that's kind of, jeez, yeah. that's a little disturbing, like, <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so I guess I mean for a shock factor, yeah. But this song was horrible, man. Like this, <laughs> this was another one of them songs, uh, especially towards the end. Um, it, it not only was it repetitive, it just like I, I, it just too much, too many things happening where I just wanted to like hold my ears. Like I, I, I'm all about like metal and like clean, like you know, just like something with a good rhythm and just clean. But this is just like all over the place, and there's so many like layers of guitars and things going on in the background where I just can't like it becomes noise. It, yeah it just becomes noise exactly that's a good way of putting it but 
other than that, yeah, um, it sounded a, like it should have been the last song, the the Antichrist superstar. Wish it would have been the last song. I, <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> that's all I got, guys. Who wants to go? <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. It's um, I feel like he kind of. I thought it, what he was trying to say was like he's trying to like say like like what the church like the church was like anti-gay. So he was trying to like go against the church and be like, oh no, I'm anti-Christ. Is that what he was trying to say? Yeah, kind it could of? be. I mean, that's just a Manson kind of thing to do. So, I mean, I be. guess well, that song is probably like the one that kind of, I guess you could say was a better written one. You know? Maybe he was trying to say much. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I got from it anyway. It's like he's saying all these things like anti-Christ, like anti-abortion or whatever. You know, Fuck you all, I'm anti-Christ. No, I get that. Mm-hmm. That's a Manson thing to do. Right? Other than that, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't really like it. I mean, it sounded better musically than the last couple, but then the endings. One thing I have to say throughout this whole entire album, except for maybe two tracks, the way he ends songs is it's like taking a shit into a can and shoving it into your ear. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's a big giant shit can of sound hitting your ear and it's awful um, you can end songs a million different ways but the, the distortion the, the pitch the squeals the smashing of things is just not pleasant like the last track if you want to go out like that that's cool you know, really, but every track yeah. come on man um, yeah Again, my heart's just breaking a little bit each song as we go into it. <laughs> my ears are breaking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I feel that way too. Like I said, this is like an audio enema. <laughs> okay, we're moving into this next one. The next song is called Minute of Decay. Oh, God. All right. Wait, before we review it. I have heard this before, actually. Yeah, Yeah, we just heard it now, too. (laughs) Same type of drums. Same little piano. Sounds way better when she sings. Yeah, that's what I said. It needs some sultry vocals. Yeah. Okay, then. Another knockoff. Oh, man. I I feel like they were just chasing trends this whole album. Uh, either that or trying to copy stuff that was good and then turned it into shit. Like, this song had really good potential. It did. And then the chorus came in and it was just like... Yeah, that, that had the that bounce that it had to it. Yeah. I mean, amazing. if they would have stuck with that, the whole track, and, and maybe and a couple... Baseline. Right, a couple little different things. But man, he turned that into... Uh, like, he's, he's probably in the suit. Like, nope, sounds too good, guys. Right, right. Yeah. Like, let's fuck it up. Yeah. Turn the volume all the way up yeah. and I'll scream. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, boy. Wow. I really had higher hopes for this because I did. I, I used to really dig this stuff. And then, yeah. Well, this. Uh, do you have anything to say about this one? I like the bounce too. Right. I like the Portis head knockoff. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the beginning came off great, and then I was like, oh, yeah, and then I somehow knew in my head this was not going to last. Next song. All right, we can get into the next song. <laughs> All right, the next one is called The Reflecting God. Oh, joy. <sighs> wow. All right. So that was The that Reflecting was God, yeah. Um, I felt like it. there was definitely more movement in this song where it wasn't just like... A chorus that just went on forever. Uh, and, um, yeah, no, it actually had some headbanging parts. I liked it. Uh, it was different, and it made you kind of want to get up and, like, get into it. Um, instead of just a bunch of noise that's like, gosh, I can't stand it. So, um, when it comes to that, I, I liked it. Um, yeah, I mean, reading the lyrics are really uh, weird, like they mostly are. Um, but, uh, yeah, other than that... I, I a little example song. of those lyrics. Sure. What was your favorite sure, lyric? Sure. Well, your world is an ashtray. Okay. All right. We burn a coil like cigarettes. 
The more you cry, your ashes turn to mud. It's the nature of the leeches, the virgins. Okay, you just had me everything up until the leech virgin thing. I don't understand how that goes, but it was kind of... If if, if Bob Dylan didn't have as much talent, that would be kind of good. (laughs) I I like the song a lot, actually. I I forgot the name of the song, and as soon as it kicked in, I was like, oh, I know this, I love this song. And uh, it... I like the song a lot, actually. Um, you know, when this song is live, it is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I dig the song. Is this? Is it? Is it wasn't the last song. Yeah, one, one, one last song. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. Mike, what was your feeling on this? I one? like it. I feel like that's that's his that's his lane, bro. That's Marilyn Manson's lane right there. Right. And he should stick. He should have stuck with it throughout this whole album. <laughs> it would have been a decent album. Yeah, but no. they try to do too much. But right. yeah, that's a good song. I feel like that's for the scream, the kind of like screechy voice, right. fit perfect with that track. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's just kind of sad. It's um, at the end there, you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people would have given up by now, but yeah, <laughs> that's why we are trained professionals. Yes. we stick it through. We stick through we it. We do exactly. We do. We do. All right. All right. So, so still butter and tea swizzle. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Uh, so this next song uh, is called. Man that you fear. Wow. I thought they were saying many of your dishes will get destroyed. I'm like, what? <laughs> Why is my dishes being destroyed? Man? I like Hershey. my dishes. They're plastic. Oh, they're hard to destroy. Your dishes, oh my gosh. What the hell? What did we just listen to? <laughs> that would be called audio diarrhea. Oh God. You know that thing where you type it in on your computer and it talks to you? Speak and smell. That's what is the first technology that that's what that was. When it first came out. It was speak and spell. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. That that sounded like shit. Like, let's just put that what it was. Like, wow. they they tried to be Pink Floyd and the Beatles and they failed miserably. Like, God, why couldn't they end it with the last track? Yeah. So then, well, that might have been a bonus track. That might have been the deluxe. What edition. was the bonus? <laughs> I mean, like, I would have rather had you two sit on each side of me and fart in my ear for six minutes to listen to that. That was awful. All right. Wow. So, conclusions here. Yeah. Aren't you reviewing that song? Uh, oh. I don't really have much to say. But, you know, someone else does. I don't like it. No, no. I don't like it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that song, um, gee, I don't know if that was the worst one on the album, you know, No, not the worst one. Uh, well, it was, it was, it was up there. It was up there. It, it wasn't was up the worst there. one. Right, so, what were the three best? Uh, three best are Beautiful People, for sure. Tourniquet, and, uh, The God, The God, yeah, it was the first one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like Little Horn, too. That was a pretty good one. Yeah. yeah. Th- this is the perfect example of what four really really good songs and one phenomenal song you do to celebrate because everything else on this was at best mediocre to shit and four really good songs and like I said the one Beautiful People is one of the greatest rock songs ever made I mean it, it's in the top 50 if not top 25 but the rest of this I'm very sad that, you know, that 20 years ago I got this <laughs> Or at least really cool and cutting edge. Yeah. No, I did push the envelope, but we'll give it that. They weren't afraid. They definitely weren't afraid to try something different. No, uh, no. Yeah. And back in 96, this was groundbreaking. There yeah. was a lot of stuff in there that you could hear right. today. Mm-hmm. You know. But does it hold up now? No, unfortunately. So. Mm-hmm. No deal. So in conclusion, how many couches we gonna get? Um, I'm I'm gonna let you two go on this first because I gotta think because I'm I'm torn. In conclusion, yeah. three good tracks on the album for me. Um, I like the experimentalness. I do not like the sound of that dude's voice. It makes me nauseous. Makes maybe it would just mu- it wasn't mixed properly. I don't know. Nah. No. No. I think it was almost overproduced at times. Yeah. Like they're they trying was, to compensate. Right. Like they know he sucked as a vocalist, um, so they were like trying to put too much into it. Yeah, it was. Um, I'm gonna give it out of out of couch out of ten couches. Um, I'm gonna have to go with four couches. Four 
couch. Oh, four, four couch. Four them things. Okay. You gave Swift a four couch the last oh. week, and you gave it a three. Yeah, I think four is like a good number for a, a lot of these right. very bad albums. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, if I gotta rate couches too, then that's cool. Um, overall, there was like four songs that I was cool with. I, I mean, I like instrumentally wise. None of the songs I like lyrically wise. I'm gonna just keep it real with you guys. I, I like not I one beautiful song. Beautiful people. Beautiful people was good, but it wasn't like, oh man, that was like as deep. You know what I mean? That like, song actually is deep. Uh, I, I, so I, you got, if you don't know what it's about, when he was at a Hollywood party. He was looking at all the phony, pretentious people who were just fake idols and fake, just the fakeness of Hollywood. Mm. And that's what he wrote the song about. Mm. It, 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 that's what it's about. Like the, the, the pretentiousness and fakeness of the people who he was at that time around and just, you know. Okay. So there is actual depth to the song. Uh, okay. Well, maybe I just didn't like understand where he was coming from with the right, lyrics. Right. So now that you explain that, that's a little bit. That's better yeah. for me. Like yeah, these people were put on pedestals to be fake icons and gods and, you know, they all worship the Hollywood star. Mm-hmm. And that's what he was kind of going with. But mm. that's that, that much I do know because I, I, he had said something about it in an interview years ago. Okay. Well, yeah, other than that track, then, um, lyrically, I wasn't feeling it. But uh, yeah, um, if I got to rate this with the couches, um, I just uh, got where the couches are coming from. We're sitting on them. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm stupid. <laughs> uh, yeah, four out of ten. Four out of ten on this four one. Ten couches. So there'd yeah. be like two love seats, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, there'd be like a recliner. I don't know. A love seat would be like or half a couch, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, that is. A, that's what a couch. Well, <laughs> yeah, so you could do that. Be. I didn't get eight. my review yet. Yeah. I know, but I'm just breaking it down. Yeah. So it could be eight <laughs> love seats. <laughs> what? <laughs> Maybe you're taking a little bit of that Manson <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Um Boy, I'm torn because if this is the 16, 17-year-old me listening to this, I'd probably give it like a 7 or an 8. I'd be like, oh, this is really cool. This is really powerful. This is some heavy stuff, man. The 38-year-old me listening to it is going... What the fuck were you thinking at 17 years old, man? Um, I'm not going to give it a four, but I'm going to give it a, a five. Uh, it's better than the Taylor Swift crap. It had at least emotion and power and just, it might not always been good, but, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, it's better. Oh, is it better than, than the... Uh, what was the kid's name that we did the first one? Logic. Logic. Is it better than Logic, or is it a different kind of better? Because I mean, Beautiful People Alone is better than the whole Logic album. Yeah, that song is amazing. And, yeah. And, and so is with the the God, uh, you know. So. Oh crap. We can't take it back now. We can't take we the logic <laughs> back now. But like to say it's lower than logic is even kind of like it's not it's not as good as Soundgarden. It's not as good as the Nas and right. and, and, and Damian Marley. Uh, ooh. Uh, all right, I'm gonna go to five just yeah. because we didn't know what we were doing with logic at that time. Five couches. Five couches. All right. So what would that bring our total to here? Uh, Four point five on the couch scale. I give it four point five. Yeah. I mean, yeah, two fours and a five. I guess that would be four point five. Four point five. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, didn't we give Taylor Swift last week a four point five? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So this was like a shit sandwich. I don't even think you rated it, did you? (laughs) I gave it a three. No, it was a rough four. Then it was a four. It was a four. It was a four. Yeah, I think. Yeah, Taylor Swift was a four. So this was a. Half a point better than Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. I see. I can't do that, man. Just the beautiful people alone should give this at least a five. I don't know. It is tough. Yeah. We for, I forgot about it because it, it was so long ago. Yeah, it was two hours ago, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This album drained us, mm-hmm. in a, in not in a good way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, you let us know what you think because. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're obviously mixed about it. And um, next week, we're going to do Halloween songs. We're going to do the top ten Halloween songs. We're all three going to 
put together a list of songs and and then narrow it down to what Halloween songs we think are the top 10 Halloween songs out there and we're gonna just have fun with it um, you know maybe we'll do a spooky mask or mm. something you know mm. yeah I'm dressing yeah. up yeah, yeah. All yeah. Right. we all better be dressed we, we up we will definitely be dressed up next week nice. <laughs> you gotta see what though but yeah um, you know as always like and subscribe definitely yep yep and uh, BA Take us home. All right, guys. You already know what to do. Just like Joe said, like, subscribe. Definitely want to know your opinions on this review because it was out there for sure. <laughs> um, but, yeah, really excited to hear from you guys. And thanks for all the support so far. Uh, it seems like a lot of you guys have been tuning in to these episodes of 3 Dudes Review. So I want to appreciate all the fans out there, the people that like this. Uh, we do it for you guys. So And we do it for money. So Bud Light, if you'd like to sponsor us, please. <laughs> Uh, message me at three dudes review dot com and uh, <laughs> we'll take your money. We appreciate it. Thank well, you. Wow, that, what a way to get a sponsor. Uh, anyways, yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, you know, uh, we don't have any kind of like Patreon or anything set up, but you know, maybe down the road if we keep uh, having awesome fans like you guys, we'll set something up and there'll be a way to donate to us if you guys would like to. And you know, maybe later down the road, get some sponsors. We'll check it out. And if we get over 150 views on this video, I'm gonna shave my head. Okay, well. Actually, we'll shave his head. My head? Why not? We really? can shave yours. You, you, you got no, the most no. hair. You got the most yeah, hair. You got the most hair. You got the most hair. You got the LeBron James haircut going <laughs> yeah. on right now, B.A. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. I'm without the horseshoe in the back. <laughs> I'm sorry, LeBron. You're a great ball player, but you need to shave that. That's, oh. that's, that's, you're looking like a monk. I'm trying to save it, man. Save what? He had a bald spot bigger than mine in the he back. He brought his hairline back, though. He, what hairline? <laughs> it looked like a halo on his head. It came back though. He, he, had, he was using that one thing that uh, male regenerating <laughs> just for men. Just for men. Yeah. Just for men. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> Bosley. Duncan on the broad right, right now. Let's get out of this video. Yeah. All, all right. right. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace. It's like if you, <laughs> if you brought home a one night stand and you found out she had a penis. Ooh. Like, you, you're, you're like, like, she looked real good. Yeah, uh, like the chick was looking damn good, and then all of a sudden, here comes the penis, and you're like, oh, oh great, no, crying. Oh, and, man. You know, because it's like, that's the that's the shock that you feel with the chorus here. Yeah. It's yeah. like. When do you find out she has a penis, though? Would you be after you kissed her? You'd be like kissing I her? I mean, that, that would be the whole day of it. It's yeah. like, you're all ready you're to go, already, and you're ready to cut the pants off, and you go, what the fuck is that? <laughs> And then you were like, "B.A., yeah, you know, that's for you, man. <laughs> nah. Mike, you want to tap that? Nah. Come on. Like, no offense to the Are you allowed to beat somebody up after that? Uh, that one, I, I don't know. I, no, I, I feel like they should be honest and truthful with you. I you do agree. I mean? There like, should be an honesty hey, factor. You know, like, yeah, there really yeah. should be. Like, I mean, really I'm not going to lie. I have seen some transgenders who look phenomenal and have some better tits than most women. <laughs> But at the end of the day, I am not into the penis. So there you go. Yeah. And and that's what this song was kind of like. You know, it's like really nice looking package, but there are certain parts I'm not into that are the penis of the song. Good analogy. Wow. Yeah. You're, you're good at that. Yeah. yeah I try. Dang. Uh, we're going to get so many letters right now saying... You guys are sexist. You guys are transphobia. Yeah. Listen, if you I'm ever meet not. me in sure. real life, you're going to know that I'm the kind of guy who I don't give a shit what you are. As long as you're a good person, you can be anything you want to be. I mean, so that's the way I look at it. So I mean, we're just, for lack of better terms, using the analogy of that right now. Yeah. We're shocking it on like Manson to deal with it. We're trying to get our views up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mike said he's going to dance with his tail or oh. his thing between his legs and say, I'm a pretty man. If I, I would have if I would have been prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> Put the lotion in the basket. I didn't, I didn't bring my oil. Oh, oh. We have a shaving kit. And uh, B.A. Didn't, doesn't have his lotion out anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, going to give B.A. one dollar <laughs> to shave his nuts. No, no, no. One dollar. One dollar. No, that's all right. He's I'll like, I do that for free. That's why I got the kid <laughs>
<laughs> he's like, listen, when I get them ladies over here, I got my main kit and my lotion in the back. I don't, I don't understand. Okay. All you right. better leave every single word of this in. Do not edit this. 